Our next speaker joined Booking.com in 2018 as VP of its home division after a long stint in a strategic role at Airbnb. One year into the job, Booking's global alternative accommodations listings have increased by 13% and his responsibilities have expanded. He now oversees Booking's home division, hotel chain partnerships, and strategic segments. Please welcome Vice President of Global Segments for Booking, Booking.com, Olivier Gremiel. Thank you. I need one of those too. <laughs> So Olivier, in 2019, we've arrived at a really interesting time for global online travel. Booking, C-Trip, and Expedia are all essentially at the same scale for gross bookings across product lines. In this scenario, where do you, where do you turn for growth? Uh, I think there is a lot of growth uh, still to capture. Like if you look at the travel market, it's still growing at you know, 5% uh, more or less. Uh, a lot of people are still uh, booking offline and there is still quite a bit of uh, travel we can actually bring online. Uh, and then, uh, you know, within uh, this segment on our side, there are still a lot of things we can do. Whether it's in the accommodation segment, we are going at one segment after another, obviously coming from the hotel side, but adding additional segments uh, uh, and, and strengthening them uh, as we can. And then obviously going to more uh, parts of the travel from transport to experiences in other places. So there is still, I think for us, but for everybody, a lot of uh, growth potential uh, in the future. And that's what, that's what Glenn always likes to say, right? That there's lots of runway, there's all this stuff that's still offline, whether you're looking at regions or, or segments. Uh, but recently, in the mo most recent quarter, we're not seeing, we're not seeing a lot of growth, a, a, a revenue decline um, and gross bookings up slightly. So what, what's the challenge now? If there's so much out there to capture, um, why not a double digit growth rate? Yeah, I think we are dependent a little bit on some of the uh, uh, trends and obviously there have been some slowdown in some of our key markets uh, in, in the past few months. Uh, there are some comp effects on you know, when the quarters end and start and when you know, specific like, uh, holidays happen. Uh, and I think, yeah, we, the market is still, the potential is still out there and it's our responsibility to go and capture it. So uh, that's what we are trying to do, uh, uh, putting things in order uh, in the segments that I'm in charge of. What we are trying to do is size the opportunities of each of the segments, whether it's home, whether it's like uh, uh, B&Bs and, and, you know, all of them and prioritize them and go one after the other. So we, have a, uh, we are putting in place a structure to be able to actually uh, uh, capture everything because our goal is to have all the types of accommodation on the platform at scale. Uh, we have 28 million options to choose from right now. Nobody has that scale, uh, especially all over the world. Uh, so we have a head start, but uh, uh, we need to continue to actually bring that supply online uh, to make sure that uh, people can actually find everything they want for every type of uh, travel. Does the, does the focus on alternative accommodations compromise hotel at all? Uh, no, because if you look at it, like, uh, uh, you know, obviously we started from the hotel business and added the uh, homes and apartments afterwards, uh, and you see that most people actually use uh, both, so you don't have like a hotel guest on one side and a homes guest on the other, it's just the same guest, it's just depending on what you are uh, uh, doing. So many of you might actually be using a hotel right now if you stay one night in Amsterdam, and then next weekend you might actually uh, uh, choose a B&B &B in the countryside, and then you'll have a villa for your summer vacation. So uh, the guests are actually the same. Uh, it's just they are using uh, uh, things for different uh, options. So when we look at our customer base, 40 million of our customers in the past 12 months actually uh, booked a home and accommodation, and a lot of them actually booked both. You don't, we don't have that many people who actually book one or the other. More and more of our guests actually book both depending on you know, the situation. So. Are you seeing that go up within Europe still, or the, the cross? The, the, the travelers who are booking both. Yeah, yeah, it, it's going up and it's, it's, it has been how we grew so far because uh, uh, many people still don't know that we have homes and apartments. So uh, uh, the vast majority of them learned that we have homes and apartments not from our advertising or anything, but just by being on the website. So the, many of them actually start to look uh, uh, with no specific uh, accommodation in mind and they see, oh, they have, and obviously they're on multiple websites like anybody, and they see we have homes and apartments uh, and they say, oh yeah, I didn't know that, so I'm going to 
book one. So that's the main uh, uh, way we actually act acquiring customers for home division is by having people actually land on the website to do a random search and they see we have homes and apartments. So that's how we create awareness. You used to have a brand for that, villas.com, that probably helped with awareness. Do, do you, you know, how do you feel about this strategy of, keep, of keeping it all under? Okay. Yeah, so that, you know, obviously uh, uh, Booking is doing a lot of test and learn and Villas was one of these examples where we say, hey, there is a new category of you know, Villas and apartments. We are going to create a separate website completely uh, uh, tailored for that specific audience. Uh, and you know, we're going to put some marketing behind it. It's going to be amazing. Um, the thing that we found out is uh, the vast majority of the bookings we had for homes and apartments were actually on booking.com, not on villas.com. Uh, and that's where we actually realized that what people want and all the surveys that have been done since then uh, confirm that people want to have everything on the same platform. So we made that switch pretty early uh, 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 several years ago, but you see that everybody in the industry is actually doing the same. Uh, whether the home uh, platform adding hotels or the hotel platform adding homes. So everybody is getting into the same game. Yeah, so speaking of that, of course, Marriott recently made an announcement, um, historically, Choice and Wyndham have both dabbled in alternative accommodations, and there's a lot of stepping in and stepping out, and Marriott's certainly the biggest to do it, and they've got you know, some strength with their loyalty program that some people think makes this uh, potentially a bigger move than for, for others and have done it in the past. Do you think this will be a different story that will will alternative you know accommodations become vacation rentals become a part a big part of the Marriott brand so it, it's still relatively small compared to what they do right like I think they have 2,000 uh, homes uh, uh, right now the, that you can book I think 90 plus percent of the, of the bookings were done by loyalty members uh, some of them redeeming points actually to actually do that uh, but I think it's a great move for them and obviously as you said many of the chains have uh, tested the waters in the past few years there are only a handful who say that they don't want to do it but all of the others actually uh, tried in one shape or form and some of them even tried twice um, so I think it's definitely something on their mind uh, and if they manage to actually integrate them well and again they have the same uh, point of view as we do, which is our customers don't necessarily want to be in a hotel all the time. They want to have a breadth of uh, uh, choice, uh, especially for the ones who have a strong loyalty program. It's a definitely a great move. If operationally they manage to make it work and the quality is actually where uh, uh, the customers, their customers want it to be, I think it's a winning formula. It's not easy, but it's, uh, I think it's a good move. So another new sort of merging of spaces is Airbnb's acquisition of Hotel Tonight. And yesterday, your old colleague, Yarun, said that they plan to integrate the content onto Airbnb and have it side by side. <clears throat> but they're, they're doing some other things as well. So we know that they're going to, you know, hotels and homes will be, will be together on Airbnb. They've also hired the former CEO of Virgin America and a lot of speculation about when they'll when and how they'll get into flights of course they are already sort of selling experiences it looks like you'll be facing them as a full-on OTA competitor soon yeah again I think uh, it's no secret that uh uh, everybody is getting into the conversions of both on the accommodation side, having everything on the same platform. Again, we think we have a little bit of a head start on that side, uh, uh, but also bringing transport experiences, anything in between uh, on the same platform. Uh, because, uh, uh, and to Brent Oberman's point earlier, I think uh, uh, travel to some extent is still difficult when you see uh, uh, that you know, people still uh, go on you know, tens of websites to plan their travel. There is definitely a push for uh, a convergence and making it easier for them. Um, so yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it's a move that uh, uh, everybody, uh, everybody is going after just to make sure that uh, uh, you, know, you can make it easier for the travelers to book. It's actually interesting that uh, lastminute.com did all of that 20 years ago, so uh, we might be a little bit slow at, uh, at putting uh, in practice what uh, Brent had on this slide like in 2000 or 2001. But, uh, People are ahead of their, their time. Yeah. Um, so what is the single most important thing that Booking needs to do to stay ahead of an Airbnb when it becomes a full-on OTA? Is it going stronger with flights? Um, is it, 
you know, a huge, a massive supply of all the types of lodging? Is it something else altogether? Yeah, nothing, I'm not going to reveal anything uh, amazing here. It's mostly execution of what we do, which is uh, uh, it took us 20 years to uh, put the, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of the hotels on the planet on the platform, uh, and because it's hard. We have 213 offices in the world uh, uh, just to actually do that, to actually go hotel by hotel, one by one, to uh, uh, bring them on the platform. Uh, we have thousands of people in our own customer support centers because it's actually a tough business. So I think what, uh, uh, what the goal right now is to do that in additional accommodation segments on one side, but also uh, for experiences and transport and all that stuff. And you know, the, doing that is already complicated, and then putting all together and integrating everything and making it a seamless journey for the, uh, uh, for the guests, you know, uh, brings this challenge. So uh, I've heard this morning that, you know, we are not necessarily innovating as much as we should as an industry. Uh, maybe some of it is because we had, yeah, we had like a good years uh, with uh, our core business, all of us, but also mostly because I think it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult to um, uh, integrate all this supply, make sure that the, con the, the website uh, converts well because it's actually what the customers want, and uh, uh, it's actually a tough job. So uh, we're going to focus on the execution of this, uh, bring more uh, accommodation uh, 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 suppliers on the platform and do that one segment after the other. So speaking of suppliers, you've, you've rolled out some new tools for individual homeowners, and you've got a lot of property managers on the platform, and they're obviously, they obviously bring in more scale. What, what is attractive to you about the, the long tail of individual homeowners? Uh, yeah, so a few things. Obviously, we come from a DNA of, uh, of a professional segment from, uh, through our relationship with the hotels. Uh, so we started by having uh, property managers on the platform because our tools were actually uh, more designed for uh, hoteliers. So it was better, it was easier for the professionals to actually use our, our, our website. And a couple of years ago, we started to uh, uh, roll out uh, new tools for the, uh, the single property owners, people like you and me who are actually uh, uh, putting their apartments uh, uh, when they go away, uh, but it's a different business who needs different tools, uh, uh, mostly tools that are simpler to use. Uh, a lot of the things we have released recently is actually uh, porting a lot of the functionality we had on desktop on our app, uh, our partner-facing app, just to make sure that, you know, because people want to actually answer their, yeah, their messages and stuff on the app, not on the desktop. Um, this specific segment is interesting because in uh, some uh, cities it's the only thing that is legal. So if you want to have some supply uh, in places like uh, Amsterdam and Paris and you know, Barcelona and others, uh, at some point you need to uh, uh, have people who actually share their uh, home uh, when they go on vacation because uh, renting out entire uh, buildings, entire apartments is not, in most cases, of whether highly regulated or you know, completely illegal. So you need this type of supply to be able to have the right supply in a city uh, like the ones I mentioned. So another area where you're making some, big, making some bigger changes is activities. Mm -hmm. You've had them available behind you know, post-hotel booking, and now you're bringing it up front, out from behind the wall. And it seems like, it seems like that has taken a, a while. What, what, took, what took so long? What was the holdup? Yeah, but the, the main thing we were doing by putting it after the accommodation booking was actually uh, uh, a few things. One is uh, we had all the traffic, so it was much easier to actually test this way than actually acquiring traffic uh, for people who just want experiences, uh, so it made it easy. Uh, it forced us also to build a connection between uh, uh, the information we had on the accommodation side and what we could propose as experiences. So we did quite a bit on the uh, personalization of what experiences we actually show you. Uh, if we know that you booked uh, uh, you know, two rooms in a hotel or a villa with like three kids, we are not necessarily going to show you the same experiences as if you are alone uh, booking for one night in a city. So uh, there were a lot of things that we needed to, that it forced us to do uh, because we were doing it in that order. Uh, I think now it's a little bit the easier part, like uh, uh, making people book accommodation uh, experiences uh, right away is actually quite easier. So we start with 10 cities right now, and then we'll roll that to uh, all of the cities we are in at some point. So we are in more than 150 cities with experiences right now. So it was a, a deliberate choice to be able to actually uh, test the product and improve it before we actually flipped it the other way around. 
So there's some competition in that space with companies that maybe don't have that advantage of the scale of, of traffic, the hotel, established hotels business, but they do have a focus on activities and a lot of recent investment. Um, do you, at the same time, when you look right now, I would say they're not offering a, you know, a super innovative, differentiated experience for, for discovering activities. Do, do you expect, though, to fall behind in that space as Kluke and Get Your Guide uh, become, become more adept? Yeah, so it's, it's always easier when you focus only on one thing to actually uh, make it great because you develop uh, specifically for this. I think uh, the one of you were here for Ram's uh, uh, speech yesterday. Uh, Ram, in our organization, who takes care of all the experiences, that's the only thing he does all day. So to some extent, we isolated that part of the business to make sure that it could be as if he was an independent player. But on the other hand, he has the benefit of having the uh, Booking.com accommodation uh, uh, business behind him. And obviously, one of the uh, big issue in the experience space is uh, the, the, the take rate that you have if you take the commission on the price that people pay is actually much lower than what you have on the hotel side. So when you can have, you know, quote unquote, free traffic because you have a brand or because you have the traffic of the accommodation side, it makes the economics much easier. And that's where, you know, it makes it easier uh, for us to actually invest in that field. Uh, but I think a lot of the players out there who are just focusing on this are doing great great in terms of uh, product development. Uh, everybody has their niche. Uh, some of them wants to make sure they, are, they have only uh, specific types of experiences. Our point of view is we don't have a specific dogma on this. Like uh, if people want to go to Madame Tussaud next door to the uh, you know, Heineken experience, as it was mentioned yesterday, uh, they should be able to do it. And if some others want to have more niche experience, they should have that as well. So we really have the same point of view as the one we have on the accommodation side is we are not choosing on behalf of a customer. We give all the options. Uh, we make sure that we can actually uh, filter these options or find what they need or personalize them for them. Uh, but then that's their choice to actually you know, choose one experience, one accommodation, whatever it is. Our job is to provide as much as we can. Olivier, <clears throat> Brent said earlier that the large companies are not being innovative. They're too short term. What's your comment to that? Yeah, so again, I think uh, I, I, there is a difference between uh, 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 putting things on the slide uh, like Brent did uh, uh, 20 years ago and actually doing the execution. So I think what we realized was, uh, uh, again, it's difficult to do because you have to aggregate uh, and put online a lot of this uh, supply that didn't exist in the past. But I still, you know, I still take his point, which is like, uh, uh, if you look at whether, or from a customer point of view, whether the travel booking experience and planning is actually uh, 10 times better than it was two or three years ago or 10 years ago, uh, I would say not necessarily. Uh, so is it because we are not innovating enough or is it because uh, uh, it's actually more difficult than everybody thought it would be? Uh, I think it's a little bit of a combination of the two. In the activity space, it's also easy to imagine a scenario where, um, where we get into some heavy, heavy discounting for customer acquisition on the part of those activities-focused players that need to acquire customers. Is that something that, in that scenario, can, can booking stay out of that, or would you need to? Again, I think if you look at the economics and let's say 50% of the traffic you need to acquire to have experiences and 50% comes from your accommodation business, uh, it's always better to have to spend money on 50% only than having to spend it on 100%. So I don't think it's definitely, it's necessarily a, a, a huge issue for us because uh, uh, we can invest money if needed to actually acquire uh, customers, but we have this huge you know, customer base that uh, 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 we have already that we can tap into uh, virtually for free. Uh, and the good thing as well about it is, again, like we can also tailor the experiences based on the information we have about you on your accommodation. 
if you come on, a, on an app and you try to find an experience here, we'll, we don't know who you are, we don't know much about you, we don't know who you are traveling with this time, so it's much more difficult to actually personalize the options we give you than if we already know that uh, uh, you booked an accommodation in a, a specific price range, so you want more luxury or not, that you booked a, a big car or not, so we know if you have a car, so it might be easier to send you to places where uh, there are specific experiences that require a car. So we have so much more information in that part of the flow. Again, that's why we started there, because it makes the experience much better. Uh, there are still people who actually just open the app and want to actually uh, uh, book an experience on a, from scratch. Uh, and then we'll play with the others in that camp. But uh, I think when we can actually use the information we have from the other lines of business, uh, we will. So another, another big announcement in the space, or another announcement in, in our space re over the past few days was Google bringing the travel experience under one URL um, and pulling, pulling some of the more of the pieces together that had been disparate. Is that a big development, an incremental change? How do you see that? Yeah, I would say it's a, it's a big development that everybody knew would happen quite soon, right? Like, uh, obviously, uh, Google has been building uh, uh, their hotel ads, their uh, flights, uh, Google trips, and many things. And, you know, everybody in this room most likely was expecting them at some point to put all of that together. Uh, they actually started to do that on mobile before they did on desktop. Uh, and they started to put things in uh, maps before they actually built their, uh, the, the desktop version that they announced a couple of days ago. So no big surprise. Uh, and I think in true uh, Google fashion, it's actually pretty easy to use. So uh, if you have not done it, look at it. It's actually, uh, it's actually a pretty cool product. What do you think they're building towards? Are they building towards something bigger? Yeah, but they are pretty uh, transparent about the fact that they want to make uh, uh, things easier to search and, uh, uh, on, on Google in general, not only in travel. So uh, obviously, we always think of having, uh, Google having these big plans and whatever, but when you uh, talk to them uh, and you spend some time with them, you realize that, no, they, they are just sticking to what they've said they would do for quite some time. So again, it's not a big surprise when you have like a, five different products in, in travel that at some point you bring them under the same umbrella because it makes it easier for the, uh, for the customers to use. So, uh, but it, you know, it's an interesting product. We could go on about Google, but we're almost out of time. So I do want to do a quick true-false game with you, Olivier. Okay. All right. So activities are a great but ancillary product. Uh, false because I think it's actually part of a, of a trip. Uh, uh, so it's not only ancillary, they actually make, and again, like uh, you see that us and Google and others are actually integrating more and more of the different parts of the trip. So this needs to be consistent with each other. So it's more than ancillary. Private accommodations are the next big thing in business travel. Uh, partially true, I would say. Uh, I think uh, a private accommodation will never manage to uh, beat a hotel in terms of uh, if you want to go f in three different cities in Europe in the same week and you need to check in late and have your uh, laundry done and have room service and whatever, there is no way private accommodation uh, will beat that, even if you manage to integrate like a, a Deliveroo or Uber Eats on one side and somebody to pick up your laundry at 1 a.m. and stuff it's just not going to work. So I think a part of uh, business travel definitely, and we've seen quite a bit of that in the past uh, already, but uh, disrupting entirely the business travel, no. Amazon will be selling travel products by 2020. Well, they've tried in the past, you know, again, like uh, it's not a secret in the industry that uh, they are going one, uh, uh, one uh, vertical by 2020, after the other. True or false? <laughs> Uh, I would say false. Okay. And finally, except we, we, we're, we're having a partnership with them uh, right now. So I don't know if it counts as, uh, as doing something in travel, but, uh, uh, but no, if we're building a full travel product in 2020, I would say false. All right. And the only thing that could make Amsterdam better would be scooter sharing. Yes. Uh, we, how much time do we have on scooters? Um, uh, no. And the reason is uh, people are biking a lot in Amsterdam, and it's good that way. So if there could be more bikes and less scooters, it would be great. All right. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Olivier Gremiel.